I sent my best friend a, uh, an article the other day. It's from one of my favorite websites called School of Life. And uh, it's titled, When Do You Know You Are Emotionally Mature? 26 Suggestions. And so for the next 15 minutes, she proceeded to send me numbers from the 26. So um, she started to send me all of these numbers like, oh, I'm not that, oh, I'm not that, oh, I'm not that. So by the end of 26, there were 14 of the emotionally mature suggestions that we agreed we were not very good at. <laughs> One of those, number seven is, you learn the enormous influence of so-called small things on mood, bedtimes, blood sugar, and alcohol levels, degrees of background stress, et cetera, and as a result, you learn to never bring up an important contentious issue with a loved one until everyone is well rested, no one is drunk, you've had some food, nothing else is alarming you, and you aren't rushing to catch a train. So, since I am working on my emotional intelligence, um, I recognize that the presentation that I wrote was written for a totally different time when we were all well rested and well fed and we are all at the end of the day and exhausted. So what I would like to do is change what I had written and still talk about this but make it significantly more personal. Because at the end of a long day, the last thing that you need is a bunch of philosophy and reasons why. We're all already tapped and now at the end of the day, we're super mega tapped, right? So we don't need to talk about more shit that's gonna wear us out. What we are gonna talk about is the stuff that really matters, which is what's next, right? Like, okay, I'm here at a big, long weekend, so what do I need to know to make this time really worth it? A couple of years ago I went, um, I had been blogging, I hadn't been bl blogging very smartly, and uh, I ended up at a conference with um, a sponsor, and Jaden Hare from Steamy Kitchen was there. At the time, Jaden was one of the biggest bloggers on the internet. And I remember sitting next to her and being like, I've never sat next to anyone so famous. You know, I'm sure nobody else knew who she was, but I was kind of panicked and excited. And um, we kind of talked, and I was telling her about this life transition that I was going through. And she said, Why don't you come and visit me and my family in Florida? And so that summer, I threw my kids in the car with my husband, now ex-husband, <laughs> best decision I ever made. And uh, we drove across um, from Utah to Florida. And as we got to Florida, um, I remember, you know, we were letting the kids play and I just kept being in this like moment of awe with Jaden. Um, every time I'd get around her, I'd get kind of nervous and I didn't know what to like talk about because she's super famous. And finally, she said, um, Brooke, come into my office. And I said, okay. And she said, um, sit down. And I was like, oh, you know, anything for you, Jaden. And she said, um, why are you here? And I was like, cause like, well, cause you're doing something that I want to do. And she said, okay, why is your blog? And I was like, what? I, I don't know, like, cause money or things, I don't know. And she said, oh, that's your problem. That's why you don't know why you're really here. It's because you've never really figured out like why your blog. But she said, there's a reason. There's a reason that you started it, so let's get to it. And so I was like, well, you know, to make money. Okay, that's not it. Um, you know, like I want, uh, like, I'm, like I figured out that if you put stuff in a pot, that's a recipe. Nope, that's not it. Um, because, like, I don't know, it's fun to be creative. Oh, we're getting closer. And she keeps just pushing me and pushing me and pushing me until I say the words. I want to create a space where people are welcome. And she said, that's it. And she said, do you know how I know that's it? And I said, why? And I said, she said, because you started crying. And so she said, there are these these reasons that we do things, and if you can get to the root of the reasons, then you start to understand your purpose. We're gonna talk about that today because the reason that you are here is connected to the reason that you are going to be able to create community. So the first thing that I want you to do if you have a pen is I'd like you to write down 
Why are you here at this conference? Write that down. Okay, on that piece, I hope that, I hope that started a little bit of a like solution finding. So now that you have kind of thought about why are you here, let's talk about why your blog, or why your influencer, or why your Instagram, whatever it is that is your primary channel. So the first thing that I want you to do is, um, well, let me, do, let me really quickly tell you a story. Um, I have a very good friend who I went to visit this summer who's throwing a huge party full of 150 people. He has a massive 9,000 square foot home. Um, he's, built, he's built hundreds of homes for um, people all over Southern California and um, you know, is in a room surrounded by people. And um, one of his friends said, um, Tyson, I love your house. I want to know, like, and he had, like, custom designed this house. And she said, I want to know, like, what's your favorite thing about this house? And he said, um, there's only one thing in this entire home that I would be devastated to lose. And she said, what is it? Is it the, like, custom-made, um, you know, stained glass? Is it? So she's going around the room, in the house, and guessing. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this absolutely beautiful thing that you shipped in from Guatemala? No, 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 no. So finally, the group kind of gets in on this, and we end up um, in his dining room where there is this crappy little table <laughs> with stained chairs that we've tried to cover up with some kind of chair thing. And uh, he said, it's this table. He said, it was my grandparents. And when they died, it was the one thing that I got. And um, he said, the table isn't so important, but it's a reminder of the last place I felt at home. And that feeling of finding our home and our people is an innate experience that we all want and desire and crave. And there are, so we're, we're all searching for it all the time. There are four main reasons that people seek connection. A lot of us are pretty solitary creatures. We can be incredibly independent in our modern world, but there are still some reasons that people need people. The four reasons are, one, <clears throat> they need to feel like they belong. I remember um, teaching a group of 14-year-olds and this one particularly awkward, very, painfully shy girl came up to me and uh, we, were, we were kind of staying after an activity one day and she said, you know what, I love Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift gets me. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, have you had one boyfriend? <laughs> have you had one breakup? Like, I was very, you know, but the, it was a very interesting thing because I realized that whatever was going on in her quiet little space, somehow Taylor Swift was writing those stories, the stories in her heart and the stories in her mind and, the, and her hopes and her dreams, and they were coming to life. We all need to feel like we belong. And that belonging comes with we need to feel like we are understood, like someone gets us. Uh, reason number two, we need people. People need people because we need to be challenged and inspired. So we need things to work toward. That gives us purpose. It, it, it helps us move forward. It helps us create growth. We all need to feel like we're moving somewhere. Otherwise, we, we are standing still and we're sitting in depression, right? Number three, people need people because we need to be entertained. So we all are looking for some kind of escape, whether that is um, entertainment because we're laughing at our own crazy lives, whether that is entertainment because it helps us feel like we can move past our boring cubicle jobs or whatever it is. Number four, people need people because we need people to help us find answers. So of this list, to belong, to be challenged and inspired, to be entertained, to find answers, what of those four things are you doing for your audience? If you don't know, it's a good time to revisit why you're doing what you're doing and revisit the voice that you're using because you may not, if you don't know which of those four things you're doing, and you may be doing all four, um, you may not be offering, you may be wondering like, why is my channel not growing? Well, it's because we all need four things. And if you're serving one of those four, 
you're probably starting to serve a need that people want, right? Like, it's so, our world is so incredibly hyper-connected that we have to stand out from that connection in some kind of a way. We have to serve a need for our people. And so really looking at why are you here, why are you doing what you're doing, and how are you serving is step one to creating connection that creates community. So now, I hope that you have a little bit of a sense of where you are within that context. Why do we create community online? Well, one of the reasons is what I just said is community and connection are an innate sense of what we need. We need to all feel like we belong to something. The belonging helps us move ourselves forward. It gives us purpose to our lives. But for those of us as influencers, the reason that we need people is because this is the great economic equation. To make money in a consumerist society like ours, you have to sell something. The more people you can sell to, the more money you can make. The more people you can move into action, therefore, the more power you have. So for us, and I, and I'm gonna, I promise I'm gonna soften this, but people equals power. If you approach a brand and you say, um, I'm an influencer, and you can influence three people, then sure, you're an influencer. If you're a person and you, can, you say, I'm an influencer, and you can move three million people to action, you're, you have significantly more sway. So the question here is, well, how do I get from influencing three people to influencing three million, right? How do I become not just an influencer, but like a person of influence, a channel of influence? This is important because it's gonna help you drive your traffic. It helps you get to the root of your meaning and mostly it helps you find your people. And finding your people is step one in creating that community and really truly becoming an influencer that can not just drive, not just only drive numbers, but help boost your bottom line. And it's okay, it is okay to want to be in this game and to help, want to help people or want to deliver something that helps boost your bottom line and helps other people. Um, it's okay. Money is not evil. It actually helps us create um, connections and situations. Um, for instance, um, when I first got started blogging, I remember being really, really nervous talking to brands about like the bottom line because I didn't want them to feel like I was greedy. But as I have come to understand that I, there is a certain action that I can do, which is I can help move people. Then you start to realize that other, other brands and other companies need that skill, and so it's okay to seek after doing that skill really, really well. Because why do it really bad? Okay, we're gonna talk about how to do it really well. Okay, so um, how do we create connection? Um, we've talked about those four things. Del Carnegie and How to Win Friends and Influence People says, talk to someone about themselves and they'll listen for hours. My guess is that most of you have found people, your audience, and I want you to look at this list. Are, they, are the things that they like to do on a Friday night the things that you like to do on a Friday night? Are the things that they do in the morning relatively similar to the things that you do in the morning? We get people that are like us, right? And so learning how to not only establish yourself as a person talking about the things because it creates this understanding, but also helping other people feel like, wow, I know somebody who really gets me, is an important first step in setting up a community on whatever social channel or whatever your blog site is. It, it's part of staking your claim so that people can see you and find you. Roy Bennett says, the more you talk about them, the more important they will feel. The more you listen to them, the more important you will make them feel. If you don't know the answers to those questions, what do they like to do on a Friday night? It's okay. It's okay. Because another part of community is asking questions and getting to know someone, genuinely wanting to understand what do people need so that you can create a service, so that you can create a situation or a, a conversation or an understanding or whatever. Um, I got into my lift the other day uh, with a, don't you love getting in like lifts and taxis when you're like complete stranger, absolutely random, and by the time you get out eight minutes later, you're like, oh, I make out with that guy all the time. This happens very often for me, and what I found is that 
there are two questions that always work. Ha, huh, tell me why are you here, where are you from and why are you here? We all have these things that we're doing and we want to tell people, we want to be seen, we want to be witnessed. So being able to talk about yourself on your channel but also asking questions about your audience is like fabu fantastic. That is, again, the first major step to creating a community. Because community isn't just necessarily about circling around one person. That can be a thing. But it's about feeling a belonging. And we feel, belo we feel like we belong when we feel like we're understood, when we're around people who get us. Or if they don't get us, they at least appreciate us, right? OK. Um, so how to, how to move people. Um, we fill a need, we educate, provide answers, create solutions, or make decisions for them. Um, or we create an escape. We entertain, we inspire, or we resonate with them. <clears throat> so again, as we're going through this, I want you, I don't just want to tell you philosophy. I want you to say, where am I in this? Which of these resonates with me? Um, a couple of years ago, I um, had this idea to just start a food photography group on Facebook. I didn't, I had this kind of realization that I was a really bad recipe maker, um, but I was a pretty okay person at talking about photography, probably because my background is in elementary education. So I started to have this thing where I was like, well, I've been making recipes, but like maybe that's, maybe just making recipes isn't where like my passion and heart is. I think anything that you, want to do eight other things before you do that thing may be a problem. And res recipe development was starting to be that. So I was like, well, here I am. I'm a food blogger. Um, I'm making recipes, but oh, I will do the dishes before I have to sit down and write a recipe. I might be in the wrong field. But I realized, like, oh, educating people came very easily to me. It was, it was not scary to like stand up and just tell people how to do things, right? For, uh, for other people, you may say standing up in front of a room or getting on your Instagram and just like writing funny things comes super naturally. Pay attention to those things because those are the things in the world of never-ending content where if it flows fairly naturally from you, it's probably a good place to start. So what comes on this list, what comes most naturally to you? Is it educating people? Is it providing answers? Do you like creating solutions? Do you like making decisions for people? Um, or do you just really love to entertain them and inspire them and maybe create a conversation where you resonate? Where here, what in here doesn't feel scary? Circle it, star it, write it down, take it home. That's a good thing to know about where you should be and where you should be focusing. Okay, so if we know that we need to move people and we know that we need to create some kind of community in order to move people and kind of boost our own personal power as an influencer, how do, how, how do we do that? So there are a couple of very easy places. And the first, the, the thing that I want you to think about is to start thinking about some of these things, not just in terms of numbers, but again, in terms of influence. If you, if you say, this is important, how many people listen on your channels? That, that, you can say this is important in an Instagram post. You can say this is important through an email. You can say this is important through a video. You can say this is important through a YouTube group. All of these places are places where community can start to gather. For me, um, one of the most powerful spaces to create community right now continues to be the Facebook group. Facebook changed their algorithm, um, maybe it's been two, almost three years ago, um, where they were starting to kind of try to push people off of their personal posts and into more niche groups. So I kind of accidentally um, figured this out and just started a group called, very unsexily, Food Blogging, Photography, and Videography. Why did it work? Because people would go in the search bar and type in food blog and it would come up. And within less than a year, we were at nearly 10,000 members. I hardly had to lift a finger. So step one, if you want to create a community, then I seriously consider starting a Facebook group. So let's talk about the nitty gritty of that for a second. Um, thing one, if you want to start a good Facebook group that actually works, make it super searchably friendly. 
What are your people looking for? What are they typing into the search bar? It will not be sexy. They're not going to be like, entertain me. Um, a year, uh, just after I built this group and I figured out like, oh, if I just title it what, it's look, what it is that people are looking for, then we can grow, grow a group. So I created a group called um, The Best Food Videos on Facebook. I haven't even looked at it, but I think it's like, it's in the multi-thousands, and I don't even attend to that group anymore. It just grows itself because of the sheer name of it. Um, if you don't have a really straightforward name, then, it, then you're going to have to kind of build it in another way, and that's fine. But if you can simmer down what it is that you are creating, if you can look at that list that you've created and say, what I do is build lunch bowls, right? Like then we're in a really good space because we can very generally open up answers or solutions to people who may be looking for what it is that you're creating. So if you are interested in building um, a community where you can move people and build it really quickly, a Facebook group with a very straightforward title is a fantastic place to start. It should almost be able to grow itself if you label it right and then admin it right. Um, the second is on YouTube. Um, YouTube now has um, the comment section of YouTube as you build subscribers. You can actually send out notifications to your people and say there's a new, e there's a new YouTube video and they've created this little community tab where conversations can happen. So um, YouTube is still, I know a lot of people say that YouTube is dead, but it is not. If you create beautiful content that people feel connected to, go back to those first questions and ask yourself, what are you doing? Um, then YouTube is a great place where you can have conversations with people where they can feel like there's a meeting space and a gathering space and a place where they are seen and where people get them. And then um, Instagram continues to be a fantastic space to create community. Now, I would have challenged you on this a year and a half ago. I would have told you that um, Instagram comments are not in any way, shape, or form any sense of a community. Um, but over the last year and a half, as I've started becoming very personal and turning my Instagram into kind of a mini blog, what I have found is that people do gather there. They wait, and then they show up, and then they spill their heart. And so you can actually create these spaces where people come and feel safe, they come and feel like they belong in like strange little spots, like comment sections. Anywhere somebody else can leave a comment is a space where you can build a community. Anywhere you put out words or ideas is a space where you can reach your community. And so that, that can be an email list, that can be, um, you know, that can be an Instagram story. We have so many ways now of building community of course, the question is, which one of these options feels best and fits best for you? Stop doing all of it. Don't get panicked. So that's why we went through those first questions at the very beginning. What is it that you are offering? Why are you here? Why do people tune into you? That's the big question. Why? Is your audience looking at you and listening to you? And then where is that space easiest for them? So those are our big, our big questions as far as community. And then start to nurture that space. Once you get that space rocking, you can grow another one. But if you can answer the why are they here, and then where is it easiest for them to connect and feel like they belong, you have already ma answered a massive question and chances are that you're going to be able to grow that relatively quickly because now there's a specific space with a specific voice and it's easy for your people to find you and, fi and, and get to where they need to be. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we talked just a little bit about building a Facebook group. Um, just if you are interested in Facebook group, like I said, it has been a really, really fantastically massive trajectory. It's just still an insanely easy way to grow and find people that you did not know were looking for you. Um, pick a niche, make it needed, title it clearly, create clear, 
clear goals. So, so pin a post at the top and tell people how you expect them to behave and what you want them to do. You know, okay, so I went to a party the other day and um, I, I was watching everybody walk in and you know, there's that like, <laughs> hey, like it happens here a little bit, right? Like you're here, you're like trying to be brave, we're all grown ups, it's okay to feel a little awkward. Um, and then I went to another party and um, when I went to that party, I was one of the hosts and so I was a little bit in charge. And as people walked in, I would say, Claire, I need you to come and meet Jenica. Jenica, I need you to ask Claire about being a professor. Claire, I need you to ask Jenica about her, re her latest um, book that she's writing. And then instantly, off they were. We all need to feel like we know what the hell we're supposed to be doing. So if you are starting a Facebook group, if you are starting a comment section, the reason that we engage people is because we're all like this in our lives. So tell people what you want from them. And so often they will gather around that because now you've given them a purpose, now you've given them a reason. And in the Facebook group that looks like a very clear pinned post that says, in this group, please do this. Please be kind to each other. Please post pictures of your beautiful, adorable puppies. You know, whatever it is, make it clear so that people understand very clearly what their purpose is and how they can instantly feel like they're part of the community. And then implement a structure to increase engagement. If you can attend and make it very clear as to, my community is about this. Here, we do this. On Wednesdays, we do this. Then people start to feel safe around those things. And if it's serving one of those needs, they'll show up to do it. The end, that's easy, the end. Okay, great, make your communities and go. Um, for Instagram, how to build a thriving Instagram community. <sighs> okay, we had a lot of talk about vulnerability today. Um, last week I got in a big fight with a friend who said, I don't know about this whole vulnerability thing. And I said, it's science. And he said, it makes me feel icky. And I said, no, 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 no. Oh, no, vulnerability is the thing. But here's the thing. As soon as something becomes a thing, it starts to get that like dark side of icky, right? Where like it becomes formulaic. And I'm starting to see this on Instagram that like people are like starting to do the vulnerability formula. I will now tell a story so that I'm vulnerable. You know, and you're just like, oh, <coughs> dripping with horror. So if you are going to share your story, if you are going to curate your feed or invite people into your lives, rock on. But as soon as it feels like it's a task stop, and start asking, the, asking your audience about them. Start, you know, you can go back to serving a need. So you don't have to share your story in a way that feels inauthentic. If you are gonna share a story, one quick trick is that um, always start in the middle of a story. This is just a, this is just a script writing trick. Um, if you show up and I say, I'm going to tell you a story about lice, then you're like, okay. If I say, I walked into my hotel room, ordered 10 shampoos, dumped out each of them, and filled them with lice shampoo, then quietly put them on the corner of the bathtub for when my roommate would arrive. And now you have a story. And you're dying to know what's next, right? I'm waiting for him to arrive, in which case he will no longer have lice. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> so anyway, my point being that like, if you are going to share a story, tell it like a story. Make it interesting, start us in the middle, bring us into the exciting part and take us along for the ride. It's, it's like, that's the fun of storytelling. We're not telling stories because it's vulnerable and vulnerability creates connection. We're telling stories because we like stories and it creates connection, right? So if you can't go about sharing your story in a way that is fun, then let's get back to that question of like, why am I here? Maybe you just don't need to tell your story. Maybe you just need to tell information that people want. You know, so if something is starting to feel inauthentic, it's not a rule. Find another place where you fit better.
Um, also, talk about your Instagram community. If you know what they're doing on a Friday night, like, shout it out. You guys, we are all having SAFTB this weekend. Who's at a bar, you know, whatever. Um, ask questions and then give easy actions. So people want to know how they can be of use to you. So ask them questions. Tell me about a time when. Tell me what you're doing this weekend. We all like those things. Tell me your favorite Starbucks order. Um, and then giving easy actions where people just feel like a little sense of like, ging, oxytocin, I did it. So drop me an emoji. Drop me three double emoji. You know, whatever it is, creating some kind of easy action creates a sense of purpose. And when people feel purpose, they feel community. They're more likely to tune in because you've made them feel like, OK, I have a space here where I belong. And she wants to hear my voice. And, and I'm important here. OK, how do we build a thriving YouTube community? Um, with every single social media, everything, be consistent. Um, on Facebook and YouTube right now, you want to post at the same time every week. This is for two reasons. One, because the algorithm demands it. And two, because we're trying to train our audience to settle in and look forward to things, because they're more likely to come back if they know that every Monday at 10 PM, you're going to live quilt or whatever. So be consistent. Um, your first 15 minutes are your big, fat, fun window of replying to comments on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook. If you post and a post goes live, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and reply to comments in those first 15 minutes. That's actually going to boost your engagement. And so it boosts the amount of people who see, and community gathers around community. So that's your kind of secret time in those comments. Ask people to follow you. Tell them to tap the notification bell. Tell them to subscribe. One of my favorite um, new YouTubers at the end of one of his videos, I'd never seen anything like it, because maybe I don't watch enough YouTube. But he said, subscribe, subscribe. You guys, subscribe, subscribe. He did it for like a full minute, where finally I was like, well, I've been watching this guy for several weeks, and I never actually subscribed. But because he took time and space to tell me what to do and then kind of made it fun, I finally took that action. So it's OK to ask people to take an action, to, to follow you, to tap the bell. Um, and then, of course, the community tab can help you interact. Um, we will not get into that today. Um, OK. so. I just finally want to go through the benefits of the community. Um, and there are many, and we've talked through some of the reasons today. But um, when I started my Facebook group, Food Blogging, Photography, and Videography, I didn't realize how many people wanted to get into food photography as a career. And so I've had a lot of people message me over the years and say, OK, so I have a camera. I've been practicing. Uh, I think that it's pretty good. How do I find a client? And I was, and I'm always like, well, thing one, you have to have a portfolio because people have to know what it is that you do. Um, but thing number two, why be just a food photographer? Why be just a photographer? Why be just a home designer if you can be a home designer with influence? Because now I'm not just selling myself as a content creator. I'm not just selling myself as an artist. I'm selling myself as a person that people gather around, that people listen to. And so as you think about building your own community or expanding your, your access to client work or brands, you know, a lot of brands are going to come. Um, you're you're going to meet with a lot of brands. And being able to show them numbers of people who do listen to you is becoming an absolutely vital and lucrative way to get sponsors for your blog and your website and your art and the work that you're doing. So this brings us back to how do we do it? You've already answered the question for yourself. You did it at the very beginning. Figure out why you're doing this and figure out why people listen to you and then keep doing that. And if you don't yet know the answer, find it. It's no big deal. It's always time to pivot. So being able to really clearly understand what it is that you're offering, why do people connect with you, why will they talk to you, why will they communicate with you, why will they listen to you, 
is how you continue to find people like the people who have already started listening. And if you have three people that listen to you who are not your mom or your sisters, then there, there are 300 people that will listen to you. And there are 3,000 people that will listen to you. And there are 3 million people that will listen to you. You just have to keep talking and gathering them and making a reason for them to gather around you. You hopefully know a little more about who you are and what you need to do. You guys rock it. There's plenty of space for this. So you can do it. Build your communities. Rock on. Thank you, guys.